from Brush Barn. I'm Savannah. I'm Natasha. And we are going to be going over your Create on the Go box today. We're going to show you how to how to do your sign that's in here. Um, so first thing I want you to do is to unpack your box, get everything out. You should have a stencil. You should have your wood, brushes, paint, toothpicks, wax, sandpaper, a rag. Um, everything you need to get started. The only thing you need to grab um, quickly is some water mm -hmm. and paper towels and something to cover your workspace so you don't get paint everywhere. Um, the first thing we're going to do is lightly sand our surface. Um, you don't have to do a lot of sanding. Just lightly go over it. And you can sand your edges as well. Okay. After you sand, you want to just clean it off, get all the residue off of it, and then you're ready to paint your background. So you're going to get your background color. You're going to dip your sponge brush in there and go with the grain of the wood. You want to be sure to paint um, the entire surface as well as your edges. And it helps with these brushes if you hold them flat, <laughs> more flat, and drag the paint across the wood. So I've got my surface painted and all my edges. Okay. So now you want to let this dry. Um, we have to need we need it completely dry before we put our stencil on. Um, so you can find a paper plate or anything really. And fan we have a it. Clipboard. We have a clipboard. Um, you want to fan it dry. If the paint's wet, the stencil won't stick to it. So this is a very important part. Yes. While Savannah's drying um, the background there, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the stencil. The stencil is made up of three parts. Let me see if I can get it to show you here. This is probably going to be the most tricky part of your um, project, but um, if you're patient, um, it will all work out. All right, so these are the three layers of the stencil. The paper part is just the backing. The blue part is the actual stencil, and then on top of the blue, there's white sticky paper, and that's called the transfer tape. So in our first um, part, we're going to lay your stencil face down, and we're going to peel off the paper backing. To help it peel off really well, you want to rub on the back. You can run your fingers over it. 
just to make sure that that stencil is not going to stick to the backing but stay with the um, transfer tape. Sometimes using a credit card to rub over it works well, um, shh, but at home I use a little spatula. Um, <laughs> I really do it works well. <laughs> All right, so I've got my paper backing here. I'm going to hold the stencil part down and at an angle I'm going to slowly peel that backing off. Just slowly, keeping the sharp um, angle of that paper helps it peel better, in my opinion. Um, just slowly peel it. If it happens to bring up a little piece of the stencil and it stays stuck on the paper, just go back under and push it down and then start peeling um, that paper back again. And like I said, this just takes a little patience. And there we have it. That's our backing. It's now done. And so your stencil should look like this. You have the blue part, which is sticky, and that's gonna stick down onto um, your wood. And then the white transfer tape on the top. Is it mine dry is, enough? Mine is not dry enough. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer. <laughs> Having that wood dry is really key to the project working. Um, it will keep uh, paint from seeping through the stencil and the stencil will actually stick if it's dry. So now you should have a completely dry background. Um, you should be able to fill it and it would be dry. And then we're ready to place our stencil on. Um, so this sticky blue is going to go right on. And you just want to hover over it a little bit and line it up. And then when you get it where you want it to be, you're just gonna rub back to get it placed. Okay, and then you're ready to peel off the transfer tape. It should be Sure. All right, again, we're going to just peel off the transfer tape, which is our top layer here is the little white. And just like we did with the paper, we're just peeling off a corner, keeping a sharp edge, and then slowly dragging that. And again, this is going to take some patience. The transfer tape, of course, is also sticky. Therefore, it's a little harder to peel off, and that's perfectly normal. As you can see there, a little part of my um, stencil came off, so I just rub it back down and then slowly go back to peeling off. If parts of it raise a little, if I keep my hand here, it will keep it in place and I can slowly get the rest of it. a little bit of muscle, but that's all right. We got that. And as you go, you can rub the stencil down to make sure it's adhering well to the wood and the paint. Again, 
we're going to rub on it to make sure that all the little pieces are stuck down really well. Um, if there's an air bubble close to um, like one of the letters or something, it means your paint is going to go into that air bubble and you're not going to have good crisp lines. So this is also a very important part. Once you don't see any air bubbles left, and you make sure all the, especially the pointy edges, and like letters with, um, yeah, um, little loose pieces are down well, then we'll start painting our stencil. So you'll get your um, color that you want to use on your stencil, and we're just going to get a little bit. We don't want to put on the paint too thick because then it's very likely to seep through the stencil. So we get a little bit, and then we just dab, dab, dab. Um, and then you can lightly brush over where you've dabbed to spread it out and help it not to be so thick. If you're doing multiple colors um, on your stencil, you do need to be a little more careful as far as um, the placement and how, um, uh, how much paint you put on so you can have a little more control over it so that it doesn't go over to another area that you may want to paint a different color. I don't know, you may have some tips on that, Savannah. Yeah, I would just be careful on your, uh, where your lines are, where your colors are, and then just remember that um, a few thin coats is better than one thick coat when it comes to the stencil. Absolutely. So it's okay if it looks like it's not covering well the first time. You can always, once that's dry, put another. And this does really dry pretty fast um, once you do the stencil part because it's yeah. um, such a small space. show you on little areas here so where it comes to a point like that it is best if you go down with that point if you go up it's going to raise that stencil up and it will get under there um, I could feel that it did one over there when I went a little too quick so make sure whenever there's a sharp point like that that you um, go in the direction of it go down so I need to make sure I do that over here <laughs> Once you finish going over it, then you can go back to where you started and see if it's very light, then you may need to put a second coat. So I'm going to go over here just quickly, do a little more. And the second coat goes much quicker because you've already kind of sealed the edges of your stencil with the first layer of paint. So you can just brush over that um, the second time. But it is important, like Savannah said, do thin coats instead of a thick coat. And um, the multiple coats really does make it look nice and crisp. All right. Now we're back to drying. Yes. The fun part. <laughs> Now we just, we want that paint to dry before we peel the stencil off. Um, make sure it's crisp and clean when we peel it off. Mm -hmm. Now we get to peel our stencil off. Yay, the fun part. It is. You get to see what you've created. Again, we're grabbing the corner of the stencil. 
just slowly peeling back and your design should be revealed. Yay. This is my favorite part. Yes. <laughs> You just want to keep a hand um, to secure the board. Uh, of course, not on the part you just painted, just somewhere on the background. And as you can see, there are little pieces of stencil still left. So we um, have included in your box a toothpick, which comes in handy. You can just kind of get on the edge of the stencil part and then just peel it off. So we're going to do that quickly. where we're at so far. It's beautiful. We're going to make sure that um, this is dry all the way, which it should be, but we will double check. That could be a little drier. Because uh, our next step is to wax our piece. Um, this is important because it protects it um, against nicks and scratches um, and also fading um, over time. Uh, makes it much easier to clean when you're dusting uh, so it's just a good thing to do if you wanted to sand it after it's dry mm -hmm. if you wanted a more distressed look um, this would be the time to do it before you wax mm -hmm. also and if you do choose to distress just like savannah showed you in the beginning i guess things sticking me everywhere um you want to go with the grain yes so when you're distressing, you don't want to just go all over the place. You want to go nicely against the grain. A lot of times the signs do look really pretty, um, especially these, if you just sand your edges, um, yeah. gives it a nice touch. All right, so let's get to the waxing though. You're going to grab your little rag and we're going to kind of make a little poof out of it. <laughs> I don't yes. know what else you would no, call it. Yeah. <laughs> so where like you've brought all the um, corners. corners in and you just have a little bundle there. And you're going to get a little bit of the wax on it, like that. And then we're just going to start spreading it on it. Can I get that from there? You may see a little bit of the paint color on your rag. Oops, come back. Uh, that's just a little excess. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Once you have the wax covering the whole surface, we're going to buff it a little. So you're going to get one of the, so you see that was where my poof was. I'm going to just turn it inside out. I'm going to get another part now that doesn't have that much wax on it. And I'm just going to rub back and forth on it. Feel a little karate kid action. Yeah. <laughs> and more pressure this time. Yes. That just gets the excess wax off. Yes. We are really just buffing it now. Make sure that wax goes into the um, surface really well to protect it. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my edges too since I did get some wax on them. And there you go. Yay. And you'll feel to the touch, it's really smooth um, now and it's protected and will last a long time. Yes. Thank you so much for painting with us. We look forward to seeing your pictures on our Facebook and Instagram. Bye from Brush Barn. See you later.